Okay, so this is what uh, the games actually looked like that Rico played. So Rico's been sent in to retrieve. Uh, Rico's been sent in to retrieve one of the toys uh, that he already knows, uh, and was given a word that he was already familiar with. You'll notice no one's in the room, and of course that's the control for any input, uh, behavioral input that the humans might have. Uh, since Rico has to go into a room where there's nobody there, it can't be that Rico's using any kind of cues because the people aren't watching. So Rico brings back one of the known toys uh, using one of the known labels. And now Rico's going to be asked to bring back another toy that uh, he already knows the label for. Okay, so he brings that one back, no problem. And now is the crucial test. He's never seen that white rabbit in the middle of the room before, and they've given it a new name, and now the question is, does Rico bring back some other toy or this weird thing he's never seen? You see, he plays with it. He's not quite sure. What is that thing? He hears the word again. I don't really know what that is. He looks at all the different toys. Wait, it can't be that. It can't be that. Are you sure? Are you sure? Wait, what? Maybe I didn't hear you right. No, no, it's something weird. Okay, all right. So it must be this thing I've never seen before. He brings it back. Incredible. So again, the only species where this type of behavior uh, or cognition has been observed and the inferential reasoning that's required is in dogs of all species. Okay, so of all the things that were tested, there was positive evidence for all of them. Uh, and I think this really just uh, shocked a lot of people, including myself, that dogs might be possible of this type of inferential reasoning. I think one of the interesting things going forward will be uh, to test more dogs, a variety of dogs, uh, to see is this something that's really special about Border Collies because all of the dogs including Chaser, uh, Chaser uh, is a dog that was um, uh, trained by John Pilly uh, and John uh, who's at Wofford University uh, did an incredible job taking Julian Kaminsky's work and extending it even further. Chaser was able to use the principle of exclusion and inferential reasoning to learn over a thousand words um, and can showed very similar um, abilities. But the interesting thing was when um, John Pilly went and got Chaser as a puppy to, for the purpose of this research, he didn't somehow choose her as some special dog or try to try 10 or 15 dogs before he could finally identify a dog who could do this. He literally just went and got a puppy and the first puppy that he did this with uh, was incredible and turned into this dog that knows a thousand different words. So that suggests to us that this isn't something special about Rico and Chaser. This is probably something that lots of dogs have the ability to do. Just like when Oreo was using gestures, a lot of people said, well, do you think it's something special about your dog? I said, no, I think lots of dogs can do this. And I imagine that's the exact same thing. Rico and Chaser have given us a window into the minds of lots of dogs. It's not just about them. The neat thing is that Adam McClosey has taken this further with his colleagues and he's developed a game uh, and published on it where it's not, you can, um, you, it's actually a cup game uh, and basically you, you show dogs where food is not uh, and they have to infer that if it's not in this location, it must be in the other location. And that is one of the games that you can play uh, through Dognition as a laboratory game with your dog to see if your dog is capable of uh, the principal exclusion. Now, of course, that's not required, but it's fun if uh, you want to see what your dog can do. So given that we discovered this amazing thing that dogs are capable of potentially fast mapping, people uh, like Julian Kaminsky continue to look for other evidence of inferential reasoning in dogs. And this is another gorgeous example where dogs uh, showed the ability to potentially understand uh, what somebody else could perceive visually. And this is related, of course, to theory of mind. We, sh we talked about dogs understanding communicative intentions or what it is you're, you want and you're trying to communicate. This is dogs understanding what you can and cannot see. And in this case, what happens is the dog it wants to play fetch. Uh, you ask it to retrieve a ball. But the, ch the trick is one of the balls is behind uh, an opaque occluder, which you as the person cannot see through. Uh, and then the other ball is behind a transparent barrier that you can see through. So in one, in, the dog can see both balls, but you can only see one. And when you say fetch, the question is, which ball does the dog bring back? Does the dog bring back the ball that you both can see or only the ball that it can see? And what they found was, what Julianne found, was that dogs tended to bring back the ball that you both could see. Interestingly, when they ran the control, when you are on the same side of the dog and you say fetch, 
dogs would tend to choose randomly because now both of you could see both balls. So this is another example where dogs are inferring when he's saying fetch, he must mean the dog, he must mean the ball that he can see. Uh, so this is a really interesting study and it's going to be uh, fun to see if this replicates, you know, at what level dogs are able to do this and where this type of uh, ability might take us in terms of our learning about how dogs uh, make inferences. The next example is uh, Philip. Philip was a dog trained by Joseph Topol, uh, who works with Adam McClosey in Hungary. This is an incredible story of a dog that was a service that is a service dog, uh, and they wanted to see if they could train Philip to be really flexible in solving problems for the people that he was helping. And instead of uh, using sort of uh, your typical um, repetition and training and sort of get a fixed behavior that when you make a command the dog really reliably does it, they wanted to see if Philip could actually imitate novel actions that you wanted him to perform. So they taught him to do as I do. Uh, and what they found was that when you said, uh, after uh, uh, several training steps, when you said, do as I do, uh, and then you showed him a novel action that he'd never seen before. So let's say you spin around and you take uh, one, you take that uh, a bottle and you move it from one location to another, and you say, "Do as I do." Philip would spin around, take the bottle, move it from one location to the other, even though he'd never seen you do this before. That is incredible. And subsequently, uh, the Hungarian team has trained dozens of dogs to do this, and I think it shows the potential power of a cognitive approach in helping us think about how we can potentially teach dogs, which will focus on in a lecture uh, to come. Okay, so uh, those are some of the big discoveries that have been made about uh, dogs understanding their social world, which I think have um, really knocked the socks off lots of people, including me. Uh, and to summarize, the discovery of remarkable social skills in dogs has really opened the door to study a whole host of questions about dog cognition. Uh, Rico and Chaser have been shown to learn the labels of objects through inferential reasoning using the principle of exclusion. This type of learning is highly similar to fast mapping observed in human children, but not in other apes. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, as people continue to probe those abilities in dogs and see if it's just a certain breed that does this, but my guess is that lots of breeds are capable of this. Dogs have also shown uh, skill at making inferences about what others can and cannot see. And of course, Philip, that we uh, ended on, has shown the ability to do as I do and learn things very quickly with very uh, little practice in incredibly flexible ways. So I think taken together, really we've learned a lot in the last uh, 10 years about how dogs understand their social world and it's more than just they read our gestures. Uh, they're doing all sorts of interesting things in solving problems together with us.